Hi there. This is Lawrence Simon, a technical writer on the documentation team at cPanel, your hosting platform of choice. Did you know that you can create a cPanel and WHM server in the cloud? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a cPanel and WHM server on the Amazon Web Services cloud. We'll perform the following tasks. We'll log into Amazon Web Services. We'll subscribe to the cPanel and WHM Amazon machine image. We'll configure the instance and launch it. We'll configure an elastic IP address. We'll connect to the instance to set the password. And then we'll connect to WHM. Are you ready? Then let's get right to it. Let's log in to Amazon Web Services. In our first video of the series, we created an Amazon Web Services account. We'll use the account from the first video to log in to the Amazon Web Services website. After you log in, the AWS Management Console page will appear, but we don't need this console page for this procedure. Open a new browser tab and visit this location, go.cpanel.net slash cpanel AMI. That's lowercase c, capital P, and then capital AMI at the end. The cPanel and WHM for Linux page will appear. Read through this page to learn about pricing, support, and other important information. And then, when you're ready, click Continue to Subscribe. The Subscribe to this software page will appear. Now, you need to accept the terms and conditions for our software. When you're ready, click Accept Terms. It may take a moment for the offer dates to appear. OK. Click Continue to Configuration. The Configure This Software page will appear. Under Fulfillment option, we'll select 64-bit Amazon Machine Image from the menu. Then, we'll select the preferred software version. We strongly encourage you to select the most recent version available in this menu. However, you can use older versions of the software if you need them. Don't worry if the newest version in the menu isn't the latest available from cPanel. After we initialize the instance, it will automatically run the cPanel and WHM maintenance script to obtain the latest version of cPanel and WHM. Then, I'll select the data center region. Amazon's regional data centers are located around the world. So select one that's either near your location or near your customers. Click Continue to Launch. The Launch This Software page will appear. The Configuration Details section displays the information you entered in the previous page. Under the Choose Action menu, we'll select Launch from Website. Then, under the EC2 Instance Type, Select the instance on which to launch this installation of cPanel and WHM. Each of these instances has different memory amounts, CPU cores, storage types, network performance ratings, and prices. By the way, if you're looking to just try out cPanel and WHM on Amazon Web Services, the T2 Micro instance is eligible for Amazon's free tier offer. I'll select T2 Small for this demonstration. Then, we'll select a VPC setting. That's an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud setting. We'll go with the option the page offers us, but you can create a new one if you need it. That's for advanced administrators, though, so let's continue. We'll scroll down to the Subnet Settings menu. This is the network subnet on which you'll create the instance. We'll go with the option that the page offers us, but you can select another from the menu or create a new one if you need it. Once again, that's for advanced administrators, so let's continue. Then, we'll scroll down to the Security Group settings. Security groups act as a firewall to control traffic for these instances. Click Create New based on seller settings. A form will appear. We'll give the security group a name and a description. Then we can set firewall rules for the security group. But that's for advanced administrators. I'll scroll down and click Save. The form will disappear. Let's scroll back up to the Key Pair Settings section. 
we'll click Create a new key pair in EC2, and a new window will appear. Click Create key pair, and a window will appear that asks for the name of the new key. I'll give it a name, and click Create. Then, tell your browser to download the new security key. I downloaded my SSH key in the Downloads directory, but you can move it to another location if you wish. Let's return to the previous browser tab. Then, refresh the key pair settings menu, and select your new key name from the menu. Finally, let's click Launch to launch the instance. A new page will appear with a success message. Congratulations! An instance has been successfully deployed. Click the EC2 console link. The EC2 console page will appear. Right now I've got the T2 small instance I just created and an instance that already existed on the account. We need to give this instance a name. When you move your pointer to that instance, a pencil button will appear. Let's click that button. And then we can give this instance a name and click the check mark. There, the new name appears in the table for this instance. Now we need to set up an elastic IP address for this instance. In the left sidebar, scroll down to the Network and Security section, and click Elastic IPs. A new page will appear. Then we'll click Allocate New Address. A new page will appear. We'll select Amazon Pool, and then click Allocate. A success message will appear, and then we'll click Close. We return to the Elastic IPs page. From here, we'll go to the Actions menu and click Associate Address. A new page will appear. For Resource Type, let's select Instance. In the Instance menu, we'll select the instance we just created. See that name we gave it? Finally, for the private IP, we'll select the available IP address in the list. Let's leave this Reassociation checkbox unchecked, OK? And then click Associate. A success message will appear. Finally, click Close. There, we've configured the Elastic IP and associated it with our instance. Let's go to the left sidebar and go back to the Instances section and click Instances. The Instances page will appear. I'll select the instance that I just created. The account's details will appear at the bottom of the page. I'll scroll down to the IPv4 public IP and click the icon next to the IP address to copy it to my clipboard. Now we're ready to use that key pair to log into the server via SSH. I'm on a MacBook Pro, so I'll open a terminal session. Then we'll change the permissions on the SSH key file. Remember, I downloaded my SSH key to the downloads directory? But you can move it to another location if you wish. I'll use the chmod command to set the permissions on the key file to 0600. Then we'll use the SSH command to connect to the server. I'll use the dash i flag to use that key file. And then I'll specify the user and server. By default, the username is CentOS. Then the at symbol, and then the IP address of the server. We copied it to our clipboard so we can paste it in here. I'll accept the warning for the connection. And there, we've logged into the server via SSH. Next, we'll change the root password. Enter the command sudo passwd. Then, enter a new password and confirm it. There, we've changed the password. Let's go back to the browser and open a new tab. In that tab, we'll go to the WHM login page for our new instance. The URL for that is https colon slash slash, the IP address, a colon, and the number 2087. Your browser may give you a few security warnings. Later on, you can set up a hostname certificate to secure your server and get rid of these warnings. Eventually, the WHM login interface will appear. 
log into WHM as the root user with the new password. And the license agreement interface will appear. Every cPanel and WHM server that's new on a particular IP address comes with a 15-day demonstration license. You can contact cPanel if you wish to buy a license, or you can buy one directly from the WHM interface. Anyway, now that we're here, the server is ready to configure, just like any other cPanel and WHM server. I'll include links to the documentation in the video description, okay? For more information about cPanel, your hosting platform of choice, visit cPanel.com. Or follow us on Twitter, at cPanel. What did you think of this video? Let us know in the comments. And for more helpful videos, subscribe to our cPanel TV channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the cloud!